Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Red Tool House. We're continuing our series on 11 things to consider before you begin your homestead. And number four is, is unfortunate, but it is becoming more and more prevalent these days, is you need to check your local laws and restrictions. Now, again, with depending on, on where you live, you know, we're, we're talking about uh, things from our experience in the United States. Uh, you may live in other countries, may have uh, tighter laws or lesser laws. But unfortunately, there's a lot of municipalities, a lot of counties that are really restricting uh, homesteading, you know, farming, living off grid, all those type of things. So some of the things that we've seen just in, in uh, you know, online and then obviously the people discussing through these forums are um, there's, like, I guess, some counties in Florida where you can't, cat is climbing my leg. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Now the cat's here. <laughs> There's some counties in Florida where you're not allowed to disconnect from the grid, the electrical grid. You actually have to have, hand off me fool, you actually have to have your house on the, tied to the electric grid. And then we've talked, we've seen other places out west, especially where um, water catchment is illegal, so you can't, you can't do rain catchment. So um, there's a lot of um, you know, building codes, of course, are another thing to look at. So if you say, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build, um, build a small shack and I'm going to live on that, uh, then you know, there's building codes and restrictions you have to follow. Um, in a situation of some friends of ours, they're, they're in Kentucky and they want to build a, a pole barn house. Now, granted, this isn't a, a law or restriction against that, but they're having a hard time finding financing. Banks don't want to uh, underwrite the pole barn house because it's not drawn up by architect's plans. It doesn't fit their little cookie cutter process. So, so there's all kinds of, of things to look into there when it comes to uh, those type of laws and restrictions. Well, even... Um Things like, you know, if you live in city limits, like I know here, um, if you are in city limits, you have to have a, they have the restriction of no more than six hens. Right, yeah. So if you want egg layers. Yeah, and, and then that's, some of those laws are just now being changed because before there was a lot of uh, you know, city limit restrictions where you couldn't have any, any yeah. chickens, anything like that. And, and as chickens are becoming more popular, again, some of these uh, municipalities that are being progressive are making those changes. But yeah, that's a good point, that you may be in a situation where you can't legally do that. So, so what do you do? What, what are your steps? Well, you, obviously, if you're living on a piece of land already and you want to start homesteading there, then of course you know, uh, you should know where you are as far as, well, I'm in XYZ County or township or city limits, and you can start researching that. One thing I suggest, and please, I am by no means a lawyer or any type of expert when it comes to zoning laws and all those type of things. But one thing I would strongly recommend you not do is pick up the phone and call your zoning office and say, hey, I live over here at this place. I'm planning to do this and I've already done that. Is that okay to do? <laughs> not a good idea. Don't do that because you may bring a world of hurt down on you. Um, you you kind of want to do researching um, uh, you know, under the radar. Uh, you can call and talk to people, talk hypotheticals. You don't necessarily have to give details of where you are, your name, that type of thing. Uh, but you kind of flesh that out. And again, a lot of this information is now is online. So you can just go to your, your, your county's website and say, okay, what are the restrictions against X? Am I in this area? Is my property zoned commercial? Is it zoned residential? Is it zoned agriculture? All those type of things. But you really need to do your homework on that because, man, it's, it's a shame to, to you hear some of these people that have put a lot of time and effort into homesteading only to find out that somebody comes in because of one complaint and shuts their entire operation down or hey you got to get rid of all this stuff you, you can't do that you know I think of um, you know, another great channel to check out if you haven't already uh, is uh, Gildbrook Farms and if you look at Gildbrook Farms they they have a, um, a story where just uh, earlier this year you know, they had had chickens and, and just gotten goats and it, it was brought to their attention that some of these old um, housing, you know, homeowners association type laws and this old development uh, that they were in, uh, people were bringing them forward to say, hey, you, you can't do any of this. So they had to get rid of a lot of their uh, chickens, they had to get rid of all their goats, and it, you know, it really was a bad setback for them. And she, she talks about all that in detail, so go check her out, uh, Gilbrook Farms there. It's a really uh, interesting story there. So uh, you know, really, it, it's, it's worth your time to do that homework in advance. Um, 
if you're moving to another piece of property somewhere else out of state or even in a different country, then man, you really got to do your homework yeah, because you just don't know what you're getting into. And that may be where it's good advice to look at other people in that area. Say uh, if you know, okay, so-and-so's farming over here, maybe they'll be willing to talk to you and call them and say, hey, uh, what did you do? Did you have to do any zoning? Did you have to do any certain regulations? Do you have a license or permits to do this stuff? And of course, the, the last restriction, that, that, gray, uh, that, that area of, of something that can impede you with homesteading, of course, are building codes. Now, building codes are put in place for all of us to be safe, but we know that not all those building codes make sense necessarily, and they don't necessarily understand some alternative building practices. Um, so you may, if you say, hey, I'm going to buy a piece of property and I'm going to go build a natural earth, uh, or I, I'm going to build a house that's all natural material or an earth build or you know, an earth ship or um, um, dirt bag home, what's <laughs> that called? Dirt bag <laughs> home. <laughs> It's not called dirtbag homes. <laughs> Get out of that dirtbag home. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> So yeah, you need to check out your zoning laws as well. If you're living in a standard house that uh, everybody expects you to live into, then it's probably not that big a deal. But if you're going to start building something different and unique, something that uh, um, doesn't fit the cookie cutter, then you, you're really going to have to make sure that's acceptable as well. All right, as we suggested, start online. When, time, when it's time to research, start online. Don't pick up the phone and call uh, uh, a government official and ask them things. Start online, ask around, talk to some friends, talk to some neighbors, those type of things. So. Okay. Well, I hope that one made sense. Thanks for watching, and join us next time as we continue this series of 11 things to consider before homesteading. Take care.